All right, so to continue on from the last tutorial, let's uh, uh, f kind of finish our thought with the diagram here and uh, on the views, there's a new feature in 1.2 where you can have a, a template, a template element. And if you have a view that belongs to that template element, any element that's derived from it can receive the same functionality as that view. So we're going to go ahead and wire that up and I'll show you more about this in a second. So all you do is go to the view, right click, base view, and you can choose the view base and this is what it is by default. Or you can choose menu screen view and it knows this exists because main menu screen uh, derives off of menu screen. And it has one view, menu screen view. So since both of these have views and they're derived from menu screen, we need to do the same thing with the login screen view. So we'll choose menu screen view for that one as well. So now anything in this view we add, as far as code is concerned or bindings, will also be applied to the main menu screen and login screen. And that's all we need to do. So let's just go ahead and save everything. Wait for it to compile. All right, we're good to go. And just so we don't forget later before we go into something else, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add the components here because I already had this scene with uh, the in GUI stuff in it. Um, I'm going to show you how you can just manually create the game manager and scene manager. Uh, it's nothing advanced. Uh, you literally just add the components. And that's all there is to it. Add component, and we'll want to add the main menu scene manager. And in the game manager, we want to make sure that we set the uh, scene manager here in the start so it knows which scene manager to load when this scene is loaded. And just to go ahead and do this, we'll go ahead and set our scene to the loading scene. All right, all looks good. So now we're gonna add our views to the actual game objects uh, that live in our scene. So since main menu scene seems to be kind of apparent to other menu screens, uh, it kind of makes sense to create this same representation in our scene hierarchy. And that's what we've done here with the panel. So I'm just going to attach uh, this main menu scene view straight to our panel here. So just right click, add to selection. Let's go ahead and do that for our main menu screen and our login screen. I'm going to click on the main menu here and this is our panel. This is where we'll add it to it. So let's go to add to selection there. And let's go do the same for our login screen. All right, add to selection. Okay, we've got everything set up. And now let's go ahead and wire all of these commands up to the actual uh, physical buttons uh, that exist in our uh, in GUI root here. So let's go to the login and I'm going to click on the login button. Now this is one of the cool tricks of UFrame and in GUI together, which I think other systems do this as well in some form or fashion. But all I have to do, since this login now has this view, if I click on the button, I can just drag login down here to the on click. And then Boom, I've got an execute method right on that view I can invoke directly. Uframe does this for all of your views. Uh, whatever elements they are connected to, you will receive uh, any kind of methods here simply because it generates uh, a method stub with the execute and then the command name. So it's a pretty convenient feature for things like this. All right, let's do the same thing for our main menu. 
Let's go ahead and wire up our log off button. So we'll grab our main menu here. Go to main menu screen view and execute log off. And we could do the same thing on our play now button, but I'm gonna show you a little trick. Uh, since our main menu scene already has a command called play game, we could kind of skip this in this scenario because we can just drag this panel down because that's what our main menu scene view is on. We drag that down to the on click. And we can call that execute directly. Execute play game. Perfect. So now that we've wired up the buttons, what we need to do is actually wire up these uh, string properties uh, in our view model to what we actually type in. So let's go to our view. And we need to actually modify this code. So we have a reference to the username input and the password input and even the error label. So let's go create those properties in our view component. So let's go to open, login screen view, bingo. Let's do public UI label, and we'll say error label. And we'll do UI input username text and public UI input password text. All right, perfect. Uh, so now that we have these, we'll wire up in a second, but let's go ahead and create our binding methods. And I'm going to do error message changed. I want the error label dot text equals value. All right, let's do the same thing for our uh, username. So we'll do public override username changed. And I believe on the text, it is actually value. Pretty simple so far. And lastly, the password changed. And we'll do password text dot value equals value. Bingo. All right. One last thing we're going to do here is we're going to simulate a two-way binding. And this is uh, one of the special cases. Uh, we call them real-time properties, but you can call them two-way bindings if you want to. Uh, we're going to actually set the username to the username.txt sorry there username text value and we're going to set the password to username or password text dot value there we go. So note that we're just copying these variables here. Because we're in the context of a game loop, this is okay. Because we're literally just copying them. This is simulating a two-way binding. So we're not ever going to run any logic on whether or not we should set these properties. We're going to actually just set them directly. So that whenever something in our controller is hit, uh, our values uh, directly match what we've typed in. So let's go wire these up, click on our login view. Now you can see we have the bindings, so we'll want to check all these on. And we'll want to check the initialized view model, make sure it's set up. Uh, we haven't wired up the active property yet, but it is going to be our first screen, so we'll just go ahead and check active for the heck of it, I guess. And we need to drag our, not our login button, our username text, password text, and error label. 
So if we run this, we look over here in our login screen view. As we type, you'll see everything is being mapped to the view model correctly. So there we go. Uh, now in the next tutorial, we're going to actually add some logic to this and even get started on the login button.